Welcome back to another Rack the Stage Author Spotlight. I'm your host, The Trigger, Rich Von Trigger, where I get the opportunity to interview amazing authors and speakers and influencers to help you better understand what their expertise and what their superpower is. Today, celebrity author Cody Lowry is going to be my guest. He is the author of Schmooze, What They Should Teach You at Harvard Business School, and just a little bit about Cody here. Cody's story is upbeat. It's a hilarious one. In fact, we're gonna have some fun with this today. He wasn't always this way though. He's come out of poverty, abandonment, and a family that moved over 32 times in a seven year period. Yet he's a Pied Piper of positivity. And he also offers advice and wisdom to help make every day count. Welcome to Rock the Stage. Cody, thanks for taking the time to be with us today. Well, thank you so much, Trigger. I am absolutely delighted to be with you today. So your book is all about the amazing word schmooze. And most people, I think, would say it's kind of a negative or off-color comment, but you're redefining this. Can, can you explain this to me, please? Oh, absolutely. The origin of the, of the word schmooze comes from the Yiddish word schmoozen, which means to chat idly in a friendly or persuasive manner so as to gain favor. Eddie Haskell of Leave it to Beaver might be a schmoozer. Hello, Mrs. Cleaver. Hello, boy, your hair looks nice. You know, he was a schmoozer and he did it all to, you know, really con somebody. And so what I've done is, uh, Triggers, I've, I've redefined the word schmooze. And it's, uh, it's about a winning smile. It's about making a great first impression. It's about stepping out of your schmooze zone. And again, I love it. And I love the term because it takes me back to yesteryear because I don't think schmooze is on the top 10 uh, terminology list anymore. But I love that you're going back to it and redefining it. Now, but you're talking about the fact that they should teach us in Harvard Business School. So, so why pick on colleges and universities now? Why, why is schmooze so important to our education or our younger generation, maybe? You know, we just don't communicate the way we used to. About uh, two years ago, I've left that position, but I, I had somebody buy my company out. And all of a sudden, I was thrust into this presidential spot with 40 millennials running around. And, and um, nice kids, very smart. Uh, but the social skills are there's there's something missing, and I can remember, you know, one of my first rules was don't bring any cell phones into the meetings, and you know, trying to um, e even a small um, good morning uh, to start the day was too much for some of these kids. You know, they all have their heads buried, and and so I think it's time to you know kind of look back and what brought you to where you are today. Um, trigger as successful as you are, I, I, I guarantee you, and I don't know you other than the last few minutes here, um, you schmoozed your way a little bit to get where you are. Yeah. If people go and they read the book, they'll know that, that the a, a common denominator that uh, I'm writing a new book, by the way, Schmoozers We Love, and a common denominator uh, before I put them in the, in the book is that They've got, they got to look out for the little guy. You know, at the end of the day, um, you know, we are, I tell my kids when they were growing up, Trigger, I said, when they, you know, bitch and moan about this and that, I'd say, listen, you have it better than 99.9% .9 of all the people that have ever lived on the face of this earth. So, you know, suck it up. Let's go. And, um, and, and we do, but it's that 1% that, I mean, they're struggling. They're at the, the bottom of the bottom and, uh, uh, a common denominator, if they want to be in my book, they got to look out for the little guy. And, and believe it or not, I started learning that at age 11. So let me dive into that a little bit, because it's great to hear you talk about the little guy. And most people today are not thinking of the little guy. They're thinking of me, myself, and I, and everyone else get out of the way. But your own story is rags to riches. Your own story is about a newspaper boy. Tell us more about that backstory to help us understand where you are now and why this is so important to you. With that said, we all started working early, and I was a newspaper boy for the Miami News. And I've got to ask you a question, Trigger. Yeah. Would you buy a paper if I told you where you got your shoes, what state you were born in, and how many birthdays you've had? Most people would for a nickel. You yeah. got your shoes on your feet, you were born in the state of infancy, and you've only had one birthday the day you were born. So... You know, I'd be selling the papers, you know, on the at Sunrise Shopping Center. And if somebody walked by, I'd say, Miami News, Blue Street Edition, the latest news. And somebody blew by me. I'd say, 
sir, would you buy a paper if I told you where you got your shoes, what state you were born in, how many birthdays you've had? And they turn around, you know, for a nickel, okay, I'll buy it. And I, and I give them the punchline. I remember one day, Saturday, I got to the mall. I used to, I used to sell papers Monday through Friday and Saturday. It was my big day. I would sell 35 papers. And this particular day, my manager, because I always sold out, wanted me to see if I could try to sell 50 papers, which I knew at the time was absolutely impossible. But anyway, I took his challenge and nobody's buying. I've been there for half an hour. I uh, look over to my, my uh, cohort is selling the Miami Herald. He doesn't have to say a world paper coming and he's just giving him a paper. And uh, so I decided, you know what? Uh, I'm not going to win this battle. And I started gathering my things to uh, get to the house. And a guy comes blowing out of the uh, restaurant. He's in a hurry, obviously. And I don't know what. It's something you, you just do instinctively. And he comes running by me. And I said, Miami News, sir. And he kept going. And I went kind of running after him. I said, sir, would you buy a paper if I told you where you got your shoes, what state you were born in, how many birthdays you've had? Trigger, he turned around so quick, I thought he was going to hit me. And he looked down at me and he said, son, how many papers do you have left? And I said, sir, I have 12 papers. He said, that's exactly how many I want. And then I want you to go home. And you know, that was something that instilled in me at age 11, um, a, a sense of, you know, there's people that are hurting and if you can be kind to, to the less fortunate and, uh, you know, it's it's going to be something that, uh, you know, it's going to work for me in, in my later life and uh, sharing those stories with my kids and, you know, having them grow up with me. Uh, they're all great schmoozers and they always think uh, of the little guy. So I'm, I'm, very, I'm delighted with that. So I love the stories. And I, again, being a paper boy myself, I totally relate to that. Totally can go back to my early years in life. But I, but I want to take you back because you did stand up comedy for a while. You were an impressionist, and before we got all on, you did a great Jerry Lewis, and I love Jerry Lewis. Yeah, so baby, you. yeah. So I love that. Now, you auditioned for Saturday Night Live. How did you smooth your way into that? Because we got to hear more about that, please. Yeah, this this is definitely a story for for people that want to know how to schmooze. But I, I uh, in my early career, I was going to be, uh, be a, in fact, I was a stand-up comedian, and my, my goal was to go to Las Vegas and, uh, uh, you know, really learn my craft then. I, I quit my job in Florida, and I started doing stand-up comedy, and uh, my wife and I were on our way to, this is uh, probably October, we were on our way to Las Vegas after the first of the year, because that's where I was moving to, and I I knew that I, I had the raw talent, you know, I hadn't earned my wings like a lot of these uh, uh, comedians had. But before I went to Las Vegas, I'd, I'd never been to New York as far. I've been to New York, but I'd never been there uh, for stand up comedy. So I thought, you know, I got enough to last me about a week. I'm going to go up and, you know, do Catch a Rising Star and the improv and, you know, just check some of the other comedy clubs uh, in town. Um, I, I, uh, I had about two days left of uh, running around New York and I just casually thought to myself, well, heck, I'm here. Why don't I audition for Saturday Night Live? Like, gosh, I'm here. Why don't I get a haircut tomorrow? I mean, it was that casual and just, you know, sometimes it's not so bad to be naive, right? And, and for sure I was because I said, yep, that's what I'll do. And I probably have time if I can get on. Not thinking that they might not even want to see me, right? So I called, uh, I called uh, the studio, Rockefeller Center, and uh, asked for the, whoever was in charge of talent. His name was John Head. He was in charge of all the talent at the, at the time. And I couldn't believe it, but uh, he got on the phone immediately. And I, I, uh, I said, uh, Mr. Head, my name is Cody Lowry, a stand-up com comedian coming from Florida. And uh, while I'm here, I would love to... Uh, audition. I said, I think I have an angle you're going to like. And he said, tell me more. And I said, well, I think I'm the only person in the world right now, including Rich Little, that does Jimmy Carter. And uh, my name is Jimmy Carter. I always tell the truth. If I tell a lie, I grow another tooth. Now, a lot of people think I'm prejudiced, come from the South. I want the American people to understand one thing right now. My four children, two of them are black. And so I did a little Carter, you know, and uh, he liked it. And um, 
He said, well, give me a call tomorrow. I got another appointment and let's see if we can't set up. It's one of those, you know. So I call the next day and it's not as easy to get him on the phone. I call once, I call twice. I call, he's always doing this, always doing that. The end of the day, I did not get a chance to talk to him. And then I thought, and this is before the advent of cell phones. I thought, well, maybe he's listed in the book, you know? And so that's, that's what I did. I, I called and got information and sure enough, he's, he's in the book. And um, I called the number and he answers the phone. I said, this is Cody Lowry. He goes, you are amazing. And I said, yeah, I don't have long. I said, I said, cause I leave, you know, the day after next, I'd love to audition. He said, he said, come by my office in the morning and, and uh, we'll go from there. I went up to the front desk and I asked for Mr. Head and uh, he, uh, he said, they it went, told me to go to a room. They said, he'll be with you in just a few minutes. And I went in and there wasn't really a stage. It was a platform. And he walked in and just a very, very nice gentleman. And I went through my routine. I went through several impressions. I did my, my Jimmy Carter. And, uh, you know, he, he loved that. I did a fast cell vasectomy. So he genuinely, I truly believe, like me, he said, Cody, I want to get two more people in the room. Would, and I'd like you to go through the uh, Carter impression again. So they came in and I don't know who they were. They, he didn't formally introduce me. They came in, they sat back and I did a couple of imitations and then went into my Jimmy Carter and they laughed. They gave me one of these and they waved and off they went, you know? And the last thing uh, Mr. Head said to me, he said, Cody, stick around New York. I'll catch you at some of the place. He didn't remember that I wasn't going to be there, you know? And um, he, uh, you know, he went off and uh, I went down to Florida and uh, Rich Little became king. What can I tell you? Missed it by that much. Well, yeah, you know, you never know. And, and people say, do you ever regret not really pursuing? Because my goal wasn't to do stand-up kind. Of. My goal was to, you know, get in, work, you know, open shows and then see where that led to, maybe with a sitcom. And they said, do you ever regret it? The first thing people will see when they open my book is a picture of me and my 11 grandkids. It's kind of one of those crazy pictures. And I got to tell you, 11 grandkids trumps uh, headlining at Caesar's Palace any day. The book is Author of Schmooze, What They Should Teach You at Harvard Business School. And again, you also work with leaders, Cody. And this is interesting that you help them learn how to better communicate, but What's the secret sauce of the smoothing communicator that you are? And I tell people it's about the secret sauce and it's building the relationship, getting the client to trust you and three, never, ever letting them down. And in between those, uh, those three points are probably a half an hour of things that I could talk about related to that. But uh, that's, that's, if you look at the, um, the real good schmoozers and, and, and a lot of the the people that I know that have been and are good leaders, I mean, they were, they were good at communicating. They were good at building that relationship and nurturing that relationship. And then when you say you're going to do something, well, you better damn well do it. Uh, don't let people down. Today, I still get calls uh, trigger with uh, uh, people on the weekends, clients. And I look down at that phone, I go, oh my God, he needs his blankie. And, uh, you know, I got a choice to make. I can, either, I can either pick up that phone and talk to him and find out whatever isn't so serious going on that he wants to talk about, um, or I can not answer that phone. I can choose not to do that. And I always answer and I always listen because that, first of all, they're paying me a pretty good uh, penny and, you know, I want to be there for them. And I think that's, uh, that's how you truly, uh, you know, build relationships. Cody, that's about the best way to wrap up our conversation here today. I really appreciate our time here. Don't forget, everybody, we will have in the post notes how to get a hold of the book via the Amazon link, and we'll have the contact information and how to get a hold of Cody Lowry as well. Don't forget the name of the book. It's Schmooze, What They Should Teach at Harvard Business School. Until next time, I'm the host, The Trigger, Rich Von Trigger, inviting you to come on back, and we'll do it again with another How to Rock the Stage author spotlight. Until next time, be well.